Hello again, and uh, thank you for joining me here online. You know who I am and what this is about. I just want to say I appreciate you coming for the Word of God, and uh, let's get right to it. Last week in church, we received a prophetic word. Uh, one of the members of the congregation stood up and said, I believe that during this election situation we have in our country, God wants the people of God to unite and stand up for what God is saying and doing and stand against what the enemy is trying to do. That's a good word. I'm not going to get much more political about it than that, but I do want to say this to you. If we're going to do that, uh, oh, by the way, another member of the congregation said, every day I start my day in prayer, putting on the armor of God piece by piece. And immediately the Spirit said to me, encourage everyone to do that, but make sure they have the knowledge from God's Word as to what that's about. So if we're going to stand against what the enemy is doing and we're going to stand for what God is doing, we want to take a look at His Word and see what it says so we can do that with His grace and with His power. Uh, anyway, from uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 13, we read, Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. We must put on the whole armor, every bit of it, every piece of it. We want to leave none of that left out. You know, we've all heard the teaching on the weakest link. The enemy will hit you where you are unarmed or unprepared for what he's doing. So he encourages us to put on all of the armor. And he says, when we do that, we have to do all to stand. His word teaches us clearly what doing everything to stand looks like. I want to add a thought from, I like to skip down to the end of the uh, uh, teaching and then we'll back up to the beginning. Uh, he kind of ends on, on the note that says, take the helmet of salvation, verse 17, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to the end that you keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. So if we are going to do everything that God says we need to do with respect to the armor, we are going to be praying with all types of prayer, and we're going to pray in the Spirit. That means we get the Holy Spirit involved. That's the way we do all of it. I said it this way in my note. If we're not praying the right prayers, if we're not doing everything that God says to do by praying the right prayers, then we're not going to stand. Anyway, let's get to this uh, 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 list here. And again, as we put on each piece of armor, we should be praying in the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit getting involved with us. And we are praying with the specific knowledge of what each piece of armor represents. All right, he tells us to uh, put on the belt of truth. Anytime God says anything about truth, he is talking to his word. And almost always he's talking about the written word of God. If you're making a stand concerning anything and you think you're standing up for God, if you don't have a scripture to support what you're doing, you may not have a leg to stand on. And if you think you're going to stand against the enemy and you don't have a scripture to use, you may not stand as you're hoping to. Jesus himself fought, well, let's say it this way, Jesus himself did battle against the enemy by quoting scripture to him. If you remember uh, in the wilderness, the enemy came to tempt Jesus and his response to it was, it is written. To begin any stand for God and any stand against the enemy, we get a scripture to base what we're doing, what we're fighting for, what we're standing up for. Secondly, the breastplate of righteousness, and it kind of goes along with the belt of truth. Oh, and let me make this point. The belt and the breastplate cover vital organs. If you're not standing on God's word, if you don't have that breastplate of righteousness on, 
uh, you, you're, you're in position to receive a deadly blow, a very deadly blow to the enemy. So the breastplate of, plate of righteousness, what does it look like? It looks like obedience to God's word. Even Jesus himself was baptized in the river of Jordan by John the Baptist. He said, I do this to fulfill all righteousness. God was instructing people who were looking for the Messiah to be baptized by John. Jesus obeyed, obeyed the word and obeyed the spirit in every area of his life. We must be doing the same thing. There's no way out of this. To stand on a word of God means your life, your words, your beliefs, even your actions are in agreement with the written word of God. Some of you think you're standing up for God and you're, what you're standing up for is contrary to his word. You're not standing in his truth and you're not standing in his righteousness. You're prey to the enemy. Next, I want to share with you, this one might be a little different. We hear about having our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. We say, well, I should be ready to share my faith. Yes, you should always be ready to share your faith. But let me tell you something about having your feet shod with the gospel. You know, if you spend hundreds of dollars on a, on a, on a pair of Nike running shoes, you don't, you don't buy them as work shoes and you don't buy them to go fishing in. You buy them to, to, to run. Running shoes, you put them on so you are prepared for what your purpose is. Ladies, you buy a nice fancy pair of high heel shoes. You're not going to use those for jogging. You're going to go to dinner. Uh, you're going to go to some uh, nice social event and your feet are going to be shod in order to prepare you and equip you for what your purpose is. So I'll say it to, the, to you this way with respect to being ready with the gospel. You're going to walk out the door tomorrow morning and every day of your life. If your purpose is to be yielded to God and useful to God, if he wants to use you for a kingdom purpose with respect to the gospel. That means, sure, you can lead somebody to Jesus, but it means if you, if God wants to speak a word to a person, and that word can come from the, the, the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. You heard something from, from God for the situation you're going through. Now you run into a person and speaking a word of truth into their life helps them get closer to God, helps them with salvation, helps them get through the toughness they're going through. If you go through this world looking to be used of God for kingdom purposes, then your feet are in fact shod with the gospel, the preparation of the gospel. All right, um, the shield of faith. Let me say this about the shield of faith. It's movable. You take a look, you see what the enemy is doing. You take a look, you see what God is doing, and you move your shield of faith to that place. Why am I bringing this up? Because sitting by in complacency with respect to what you know the devil is trying to do, that's not an option for believers in Jesus Christ. We see what the enemy is doing. We move our faith to that place. We take the word we've received from God. We walk in obedience to the, the instruction that came in that word. And now with, with, our, with our, our faith directed at what the enemy is trying to do, we stand against him and we stand up for God. All I want to say about the shield of faith, there's no complacency allowed as a believer. You look at what the enemy is doing and you make a stand against it based on, excuse me, based on what the scripture says. All right, let's talk about the helmet of salvation. I hope you're all aware. If not, you have questions about this, give me a call. Love to talk to you about being saved. And here, for the sake of the preparation of the gospel of peace, you as a person are saved from the penalty of your sins when you acknowledge your belief in the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. And because of your belief in the fact that he died for your sins, paid the price that you owed at the cross, you ask him to forgive you of your sins and you declare out of your mouth, Jesus, I am making you the Lord of my life. Come into my heart. 
Be my savior. Teach me how to follow you. I will follow you for the rest of my life. You just got saved if you prayed that prayer with me. That's the helmet of salvation on you. It is not on you if you have not com committed your life to Jesus Christ and made him your Lord and Savior. There's another application for the helmet of salvation. Salvation means saved from your sins if you're headed for hell, but salvation also means any situation that needs the, the grace power of God to fix it, that power is freely given by God and received by you to be used to bring the healing power or the delivering power the forgiving power. Anytime God's power needs to come in and fix any situation, that's the application of salvation. And so the helmet of salvation means I understand and I'm confident that if something's broke, God wants to use me to fix it. If some, if the enemy is trying something and, and I choose to stand up for God and stand against the enemy, I can expect the salvation grace power of God to come in and equip me for that. All right. Uh, and finally, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Now, once again, the sword of the spirit being the word of God, that's a movable in this, in this place. Certainly a sword is for de defense, but a sword is also for being on the offense. And it goes right with that shield of faith from this perspective. We see what the enemy is doing. We see where God wants us to make a stand against the enemy. We see where God wants us to stand up for him. Sword of the spirit, word of God. We hear from God. We align our life with God's instruction. And we, we make a choice to aggressively go after what the enemy is trying to do for the purpose of defeating it or stopping it. And just like Jesus in that wilderness, we speak the word of God that we received from God to do battle with in that situation. And we speak it and we declare it and we, we, we use it until we see the situation turned around. Well, let me sum it up this way. And I, and I said it, I said it once, but I'll, I'll, I'll let us end on this note. You can use everything I just said to you to make a stand for God during this election situation where one party is fighting the other party, even after the election for who in fact will be the president. God has a plan for this. He wants you and me as his church to stand up for what he's trying to do in the body of Christ and in our country. But what I'm teaching you will apply to any fight you're going through. You know the enemy's trying to take you out. Apply everything I just said to you and use it to resist the enemy and use it to stand up for what God wants to do in your life or wants to provide in your life. All right, uh, let's pray. Father, I thank you that, that, that we're useful to you. You need us to stand up for you, and you need us to stand against the enemy. Now, you'll never ask us to do that without your power. And you give us, through your word and through the leading of your Holy Spirit, you give us access to your power as we simply hear from you, obey the instruction, pray the prayers, and stay with it until we see that promise fulfilled that says when we've done all to stand, we will stand firm because we're standing in the grace and the power of God. I thank you, Lord. The church will rise up to the calling that is upon us now, and we will fulfill your purposes in this earth in Jesus' name. Well, thank you again for joining me here online, uh, and, and we'll see you soon. God bless.